Hi, this is Pei Zhang. This is our third lecture for the certification exam prep course, and the topic today is the written exam. The written exam will be a time-limited, computer-based, multiple-choice exam. The written exam is offered only in English. Before the examination is launched, you will have twenty to thirty minutes for the proctor to explain the testing procedure. To read the directions and complete a brief demo in order to familiarize yourself with the exam interface and ascertain that the equipment and internet connection are working properly, this time is not counted towards the examination time. The preliminary score for the written exam is available immediately after the test is electronically submitted. In NBCMI test, you will have seventy-five minutes to answer about sixty questions. Because in addition to the standard examination questions, a small number, maybe five to ten pre-test questions, may be administered to the candidates during the examination. These questions will not be scored, and you will not know which questions are the trial questions. The administration of such non-scored experimental questions is an essential step in developing future examinations. In the CCHI test, you will have two hours to answer hundred questions. What's the content of the written exam?、Um, they both test ethics and practice standards of medical interpreters, commonly used terminologies in medical settings, your familiarity with U.S. healthcare systems and medical specialties, and finally, cultural awareness. Maybe there's a slight difference in the percentage of terminology questions between the two, where NBCMI concentrates a bit more on terminologies, with 38% of questions in this regard, comparing to 22% in CCHI written test. But the general concepts are all the same, and you still have to study all four categories. The point is, you should remain current on healthcare terminology and general vocabulary in working languages through research, continuing education, etc., in order to interpret accurately and completely. U.S. healthcare system: maintain working familiarity with the U.S. healthcare system as a part of a legal and socio-economic environment. With its own culture and organizational structure to predict and respond to events appropriately, and navigate the system effectively. Cultural awareness. Recognize that individuals have different levels of acculturation and intercultural variation in order to avoid making assumptions that may misrepresent a speaker's meaning. Serve as a culture mediator by recognizing when there is risk of potential miscommunication and responding appropriately so that each person's own beliefs are expressed. Let's take a quick review of the roles of medical interpreter, which you should have learned by heart already: conduit, clarifier, culture broker, patient advocate. To be more specific, you need to maintain a high standard of accuracy and completeness in your interpretation. You should be aware of cultural gaps that you need to bridge as an interpreter, and, for example, know well the familial and relational structures in your target culture. You should actively assess the need for advocacy. When it comes to ethics and standards of practice, there are some commonly recognized documents you should read through before taking the written exam. They are put out by CHIA, EMEA, and NCIHC, respectively. Don't get intimidated; these are not very long, maybe one or two dozens of pages each. About half of the questions in the written exam will be related to these. You don't need to recite or anything; just have a good impression of the main contents. Some of the important aspects include, for example, code of confidentiality, maintaining impartiality, what to do when there's conflict of interest or ethical dilemmas, know your own competence and limitations, learn to manage unfamiliar terms and concepts, or to manage the flow of communication. Deal with situations where you have disqualification or impediments to perform, or under huge stress. 
You should know the professional courtesy and pursue professional development. Always maintain the boundaries and adhere to safety measures. There are also some legislation and regulations in healthcare interpretation you should know, especially the HIPAA privacy rule and the class national standards. Again, you don't need to memorize them, but you need to get the main ideas. As for the terminology questions, there's no shortcut. You will have to keep learning medical terms as you prepare for the national certification exams, and continue to do so even you are already working as a medical interpreter. We will talk about learning medical glossaries in a later lecture. One last tip for the ethics questions is that when you cannot recall the information from the standards of practice, just use your common sense and empathy and make your best guess. The passing rate of the written exam is always around eighty percent, meaning that it shouldn't be too hard for a relatively well prepared candidate. So good luck in passing the written exam, which is your first step in getting certified.